So how many HTTP requests that can be handled by a $6 VPS? Yes, it's a $6 VPS, 1 gigabyte of RAM, 1 shared CPU, 25 gigs of SSD and 1000 gigabytes of transfer bandwidth. It's like the minimum machine that you could get that could run you, your web application, something like Next.js or any web related application. So after I was going through Twitter, I, I stumbled upon this Bun.js sort of tweet. They actually introduced a new cluster or now they support node clusters using Bun and they are running a bunch of clusters in here and they were able to run more than 1 million and 29 HTTP requests per second in TypeScript. Yes. In TypeScript. And yes, you're hearing it right, it's 129 million HTTP requests per second. And of course, after going through the thread in here, I noticed that it's actually running on the latest i9, N2 i9 processor with the 64 gigs of RAM. So I was simply wondering how many HTTP requests can we run on the cheapest VPS provided by DigitalOcean or Hensner in here? And is it actually performant enough to host your next SaaS application or your next startup? Well, let's go ahead and find out throughout the video. So if you're wondering like, what is a VPS? And Google has a pretty good definition in here. A VPS is simply a virtual private server. That means you are getting your own private server. You control the server. It's like, has an operating system. It's like a virtual machine that is hosted somewhere, usually provided by one of these server providers like DigitalOcean or Hensner or GCP, like Google Cloud or AWS, any of those kind of things. And it will be like completely isolated environment. You can do whatever you want on it. You can host, install dependencies, delete, do whatever you want with it. And that's the cool part about it. So for server providers, there's actually two best ones and the cheapest ones. So Hetzner in here is the best one as far as I've seen on Twitter and people talking about it. I haven't tried it personally because I tried to create an account twice and I got this message, like automated message that's, oh, I like my account was deleted immediately. I reached out to support, haven't heard back from them just yet. So hopefully I can create an account and test their servers and stuff like that. And I had to fall back in here into DigitalOcean to because they basically provide a really nice servers and they are pretty cheap and it's very, very too easy to set up. Like they have a really nice UI. I've always loved their UI and then user experience. I worked with them tons and tons of times before and I absolutely adore them. So apparently in here, I try to go through the cheapest server, like the cheapest you can get, which is $4 per month. And this, this thing in here offers like 512 megabytes. So that was actually a downside because you can't run like a fully web app. You might able to run a very simple lightweight web application, but for like a SaaS, you might need like a minimum one gig. So I tried to run my Next.js sort of SaaS application or web application over on this 512 megabytes of RAM. It did not run. It crashed out because of like out of memory sort of error. So I had to upgrade to one gig in here, which is like $6 per month, which I think is pretty cheap as well. So I went through, just chose this one, chose Ubuntu in here, latest Ubuntu version, and pretty much this is gonna give you like 25 gigs of SSD. That's far more than you need. And that's it, you just go in and create your droplet. I've already created my droplet in here. I've got it in my project. So this is my droplet running one virtual CPU, one gig of RAM, gigabyte of RAM, 10 gigabytes of disk. I don't know why, why they're not giving me the 25 gigs of disk. I have no idea. Um, and yeah, that's simply what it is. I've already hosted a simple application on this, try to run it, try to go through everything and try to obviously load test it and see how it goes. And I also noticed a tweet from Levels.io, the guy that runs all his startups and businesses on a single VPS, like startups that are making more than 78K per month and more, they all been running on a single VPS. And that VPS costs around like 300, 84-ish dollars per month and it has like 16 CPUs and 64 gigs of RAM. So that's pretty impressive. I know that's a huge server, but still running all those services and getting that much of revenue from all these services. And you can just imagine that's actually running on this, just $384 per month, a single VPS. That is just mind blowing. And it even shows like the stats of the CPU usage and the memory usage and bandwidth and stuff. It never crosses like the threshold and it always runs perfectly fine. Taking that, his ups gets a lot of traffic. And he explains in here, the graph means that we use about six to 12 CPUs 
of the 16 CPUs available. That's super cool. So what about the benchmarking? We're gonna use a cool tune here called OHA. I don't know, it's called Higher or something. And it's a really, really cool HTTP load generator tool that's gonna allow us to go ahead and you know put the stress test on our VPS server running the application. So what about the web app that we deployed into this VPS? This web app is a simple SaaS and what we've been working on, which is for the Solid React book in here, it's almost done by the way. And I tried to deploy like a very preview version or very sample version of it into that VPS, because in here running on this specific IP address over here, which is the VPS's IP address, like the dedicated IP address. And everything runs perfectly in here. Just like, you know, you can go and refresh it, you would get the same thing and you get the results. Everything works absolutely fine. And if we try, for example, to refresh it in here, everything looks pretty fine. It's super fast, works perfectly. Like if it's running in a Vercel or something, and I went ahead and did some load testing here before this video because it's gonna take some time. So I went ahead and actually run the load testing here before using the CLI. I sent more than or almost like 1 million requests for this like concurrent connection, which is like 350 active concurrent users. And I just put the dedicated IP address of the VPS in here you have. And there was like, it was actually pretty interesting. The responses, the results were pretty interesting. So the success rate in here is 99%. So 99% of the time you would get a 200 status code, which means the response will come back. The server will respond perfectly fine without any issues or errors. So I think that's a pretty good rate. Now the slowest request was 18 seconds. The fastest one was like 0.26 seconds. And the average one was almost four and a half seconds. And yeah, for the request per second in here, it's just 55. I know that's actually, you know, I don't know, I expected a little more than that. So 55, I think for a very small one gigabyte of RAM, $6 VPS, I think that's pretty, pretty fine. And yeah, remember, it's not running like what Bun is running, just running a server. This is running more of a web application, like a fully fledged Next.js SaaS web application, which means it requires more RAM, it requires more resources. It takes time to respond with the actual HTML web page and stuff like that and JavaScript. You know, what's happening in, you know, an actual web application versus just an API or a node server. So I think that's still pretty impressive for me because it's very, good for the amount of requests it's receiving per second. The total data that was received in here is two gigabytes. Yes, two gigabytes. Oh yeah, and for the response time histogram in here, it's simply me telling you that in average, a response takes around 5.8 seconds to receive, to get received. This is like for like 39,000 requests and you can get the point in here from the rest of the requests. Only one request made it less than a second, which is interesting actually. But the interesting part in here that got me thinking exactly why this is happening. So this summary in here is for running it against the same project, but running on Vercel. As you in here, the success rate has dropped from 99% to 94%. And the request per second dropped from 57 to 37. I think that's a pretty significant. What's also crazy in here is actually the slowest response was 110 seconds. 110 seconds. I mean... What? That is just crazy. And yeah, the average one in here or the average response time is 11 seconds, which is also still quite interesting compared to our VPS average response time. And for the distribution in here, like almost like 90% of these requests took around 14 seconds. So yeah, comparing this with our VPS server in here, like right over here, was super interesting. Like, you know, the slowest one we got in here is 18 seconds only. And the fastest one was 0.2 seconds. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's happening, why Vercel was a lot slower compared to a $5 or $6 VPS. I do not know why it's happening. I thought that would be better, but I've heard or if saw like throughout Twitter, a lot of people complaining with like Vercel's first pricing and the performance lately, like compared to those VPSs, they take like a $5 VPS and they compare it to their same deployment on Vercel's and they see basically the same difference. I'm not sure why, if you know exactly what's happening in here, let me know in the comments, but until then, that's pretty cool. And also I have like another story coming up of how to deploy your applications from now on to a different one compared to Vercel and why you should avoid those kind of stuff. So if you want to go through into this controversy and explore a different word from a different perspective, stay tuned. But anyway guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in the next ones.